Hi everyone, Miss Melinda here, your spiritual worker from Miss Melinda's Metaphysical Services.com, here to bring you part six in my series on curses. And in part six, we're going to discuss curse breaking from a magical and spiritual perspective. Now, if you haven't gone and watched parts one through five, I encourage you to do that. There's some important foundational information there, including the way in which I am defining curses. So when we're talking about breaking a curse from a magical perspective, we're talking about working with metaphysics. We're talking about working on the energetic level, but because I'm also a spiritual worker, because I'm a spiritualist and I work with spirits, then I'm also talking about working on the spiritual level. Now, this is just coming from my personal perspective and other people in other traditions are going to have other perspectives. But because I'm coming from this perspective, the techniques that I'm going to talk about and the perspectives and approaches I'm going to talk about for curse breaking can also be applied to hex breaking and spell breaking in general across the board. So some important notes about how I would approach curse breaking, how I do approach curse breaking from a magical perspective, there are some really important aspects that need to be attended to in order for this to be effective work. And the first thing that I require is that in a um, service such as this, which is typically performed remotely, so it's not, it doesn't need to be performed with the individual in the room or in the same space as you. It can be performed from a distance. With a working such as this, you need to have a physical representation of the target or at least of the cursed aspects of the target. So this can mean you can use a candle to represent a, a target or the individual who's cursed and needs the curse removed. A candle is a very easy, very simple, very common way to approach this. Another way is to use a doll baby or a poppet, a figure that is crafted to represent the person or at least to represent the curse aspect of them. And I think in this kind of work, it's very important that you specify and set the intention very clearly that you're only representing the cursed aspect of this person because you need to be able to destroy that curse. You don't want to destroy any other part of the person. So it's important that you are naming this object and linking this object specifically, intentionally, clearly to the cursed aspect of the person. Another very important step in this process is going to be the banishing or the breaking. So the first step that I would start with is the banishing and so we're banishing the cursed energy, we're banishing the curse, which in this context also means we are breaking the curse. The banishing is the act of sending something away, getting rid of it, removing it, um, annihilating it. So in this case, the banishing is actually the act of breaking the curse because we're getting rid of the curse, right? So that can be done in a lot of different ways, but one of the things that I like to do is create that doll baby as a representation of the curse aspect of the person and then destroy that doll baby. And as that doll baby is burnt up, the curse is released, it is removed, it is null and void, it no longer exists. But in order to effectively complete a process such as this, you need to also implement cleansing, purification, protection, and blessings. And the, you need to clean the energy surrounding the person and the energy surrounding their life because if they've been under negative circumstances, challenging if, challenges, if they've had blocked energy, which is how I define a curse, then there's been some heavy weight, some stagnation, and a lot of troubles, a lot of difficulties. So you cannot just remove this energy and then expect that everything falls into place. You need to be very intentional step by step and think this through and all the processes needed in order to improve the situation. And my, in my opinion, the next process after the breaking and banishing is to cleanse, to cleanse the energy surrounding them and surrounding their lives and within them in order to 
clean up any residual effects that this curse has had on them and on their lives, right? We're tying up loose ends. We're doing the housekeeping so that they can move on into a fresh start and a positive new beginning. Now, oftentimes, cleansing, spiritual cleansing and purification are considered the same thing or are interchangeable. But in this situation and in in very specific situations such as this, I would consider purification to be a an additional or separate thing from the cleansing. So the purification is really going to then purify the energy surrounding them. That's something that's a bit more potent than just cleansing. For instance, I would use fire for purification. And this is really, you know, think about purification in an alchemical sense. A purification is to really come in and completely destroy the energy it's to transform and transmute the energy through destroying anything unwanted or anything unneeded and then replacing it with fresh purified energy. So to me, the cleansing and the purification in, in a service such as this or in a working such as this are two distinct elements. And then this needs to be followed up with protection, right? Because don't forget what we're doing when we're removing this energy, we're really creating an energetic void. You don't want to then leave the person vulnerable and open to any kind of further unwanted or negative energies, any further curses or spells, or even picking up any kind of unwanted energies surrounding them because they are vulnerable. If we remove energy and we don't intentionally fill it back up with something new, then we're leaving a space that the universe can then go ahead and fill with anything, right? So we need to be intentional about this so that we're keeping in mind the whole time that we want to move this person on to a fresh start, a new beginning, and in a positive direction. In order to do that, we need to seal the energy back up with protection so that they're not vulnerable. And then we need to also call in blessings or call in some kind of um, higher vibrations, some kind of positive new beginning, some spiritual guidance and some blessings and some higher vibrations in order to then um, nurture them and improve their situation and assist them with really moving in a positive direction and in a new beginning in a um, faster, smoother, and more joyful way. So in my opinion, those are the most important steps for breaking a curse. As I said, this can be applied to hex breaking and spell breaking as well. I feel that it's especially important to make sure we don't leave an energetic void and make sure that we don't leave the individual vulnerable energetically in any way and to have a lot of intention concerning a positive new beginning and the direction that the person is headed into after this. And this is, as I said, energetically sealing the situation. Now, if you are coming from a spiritual approach as I am, then you have some other um, options for how to approach this as well. And one option is to channel spiritual energy to assist you with the curse breaking. Now, channeling spiritual energy is something that I do regular, regularly in my work, which is why I call it spiritual work instead of just spell work, because I'm actually using the assistance of spiritual energy for this work. And that's especially um, potent and especially helpful when you're doing something as intensive as curse breaking because it offers you additional support. And not only does it offer you additional support, but not only does it reinforce the practitioner's energy and offer them additional energetic support where you're allowing spirit to work through you instead of feeling as if you have to use all of your own energy for this work. It's also offering additional spiritual support to the target, right, to the person who needs the curse broken. And it also allows you to be working on the spiritual plane as well as the metaphysical or energetic plane. So it allows the work to take place on a higher plane when we are seeking that spiritual assistance, which is very effective for long-lasting change. 
There are other options of approaches that you can take if you do work with spirit. Um, and one of them is a spirit journey. So in a spirit journey, you can perform work on the in the other realm, behind the veil, in the world behind the veil, or on the astral plane, however you want to perceive it. Um, you can perform the work there with the assistance of guides, with the assistance of ancestors. You can go into a trance and you can travel to the other realm and you can actually perform the work there as needed. And in that case, you may not need a physical representation or a magical practice associated with this work. You could, at times, accomplish all of this on the spiritual realm or on the astral realm. Um, like I said, however you want to look at it, because this is something that is practiced in many different traditions, and there are going to be a lot of different perspectives associated with this. But I have had some excellent results from actually just doing a spirit journey in order to travel to assist a client with removing energies that are unwanted from their lives and assist them with removing blockages and then moving them on into a fresh start and a new beginning. And it's not just me that's doing that work. It's it's assistance from the spirit world. It's, it's spirit guides who have helped me with that work. But that is one effective approach that you have access to if you are a spiritual worker and if you um, have practice with this sort of work. And then the other important thing that I would like to address is the after effects of this kind of work. So just like with healing work, there can be some after effects of curse removal. And that's because we're actually removing energy, right? And it could be energy which has been keeping us um, lethargic, which has been keeping us feeling stuck or blocked or heavy or even feeling like we're depressed, you know. And when we remove this, yes, there is a release, but there's also some exhaustion that's going to set in because it's kind of like uh, recovering from an illness. You're, it's a healing process. So this happens with any kind of healing work as well. And, you know, every case varies, so it's different from case to case, but sometimes the people are going to feel lethargic. They're going to feel... Um, they're going to need extra rest. They might feel extra sensitive. It's going to be just like um, when you're vulnerable and you're recovering from an illness. Your body feels, you kind of feel exhausted for no apparent reason. Um, you need some extra rest. You need to take extra care of yourself so that you can recuperate and recover. You need to be gentle with yourself. You need to practice really excellent self-care. And then that that will only last for a very short period of time before you begin to have your energy renewed, revitalized, reinvigorated, and feel uplifted, and then be able to move on into a positive new beginning and a fresh start. But it's important to recognize that recovering from an energetic blockage is like recovering from a spiritual illness. So it does take a period of recovery where that self-care is going to be needed. And that is everything that I wanted to cover about curses. I hope that you enjoyed this series on curses. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to like and share the video. Thank you so much for watching and stay blessed.